Hello everyone. This is a tutorial on how to go about accessing the LexisNexis database online via our online library, as well as how to do a little case research via our online library. Now, when you get into my courses, obviously you come to your home page of my courses, and while you can go ahead and research that way, if you'd like to, um, by clicking into the student resources, the manner in which I generally do so is to click into one of the classes, one of your classes, and then if you scan down to the bottom of your page where it says SPC Resources, you can go ahead and click into the Library Resources and Services. And then from there, you want to click into, I use databases by subject. That's easiest for me. So when you do so, you'll see the screen that looks like this before you. And you can either click down the plus under the business for the drop down list or under the legal, either way. But under business, we go ahead and we scan down to LexisNexis Academic. And we wait. And we wait. And apparently we continue to wait. Okay, so you will be able to get into this without any problem as long as you're signed into the My Courses database. If you're not signed in, then you would have to sign into the My Courses, um, the LexisNexis database and possibly even the online library, and you do so using your student ID, and the password is the last four digits of your social security number. At least that's the way it was. So I also want you to pay attention to the fact that there are tutorials and assistance within LexisNexis in order to figure out how to go about doing research within the database. If you want to save documents in searches, uh, you should be a registered user, and you should be able to sign in as well without any problem. Okay, from that, this is what you would want to do. Now, for case research, you're going to go ahead and you're going to click Cases. Now, mind you, if you have a citation, for example, uh, students in, in one of my classes right now, they're researching a case called the Kivalina case, and I give them the case citation. And so what you would do is you would take the citation, which is the number following the case name. So let's say it's 451 Southern 2nd 222. You would punch that in. And let's just see what happens if we do that. 451, and let's just actually put US 222 and see what happens. I don't know if we'll even come up with anything. Eight hundred and eighty-seven results. 451 U.S. Um, 2004. Now what that means is that's a United States Supreme Court case. Because there was not a case that actually started on page 222, it brought me to the nearest case. But let's say it was 451 U.S. 2004. That was actually our case citation that we wanted to look at. Then we go back here. I go back to cases. 451 U.S. 204. And then I click search. And see, it brings us right up to that case right there. So that's how you would do a specific case research if you're pulling it on a citation you already have. But for purposes of your research part of your project for your deliverables, if you're doing a deliverable two in any of the team projects or even a deliverable one, depending on the class, you have to do some research. So research involves using key terms from whatever you're looking at. So if you have a scenario, and let's say it seems to be a contract dispute, and maybe there's some intellectual property involved with it, and maybe it's about a song. So what you would want to do for search terms is let's start typing in search terms and see what happens. Song. Okay. Oh, why is it not doing Song. Now, when I do W forward slash S, that means within the same sentence, 
Okay, contract within sentence, copyright. And what you could do if you wanted to is you could take the root term copy and you could put an exclamation point at the end. When you pull, put an exclamation point at the end, what it does is it literally brings in every derivation of the word copy. So copyright, copy, and actually I'm going to do, go one further, copied, copying, um, copies, any derivation of that word it will bring in. So, but it could also bring in something else. But let's go ahead and start with that and see what happens. Then, so we've got song, we've got contract, we've got copyright. So maybe we also want to put in there infringe. And we're going to, again, stop with the root term, the root of the word, and just keep it there with an exclamation point to see what it pulls up. Then we could also do within sentence, a license. Let's see and see where we go with that. Okay, and then click search. Now, what's interesting, what I like about doing this, this only pulled up 22 cases, which is awesome because that's not that many cases. And what you want to do is you want to look at what's highlighted before you with the terms that you typed in. So it's got all of our terms and it talks about a mechanical license, very important. It talks about uh, the different licenses and uh, which license was valid, depends on which party properly held the copyright to the composition. And so it talks about copyright infringement as well. It doesn't say anything about breach of contract, but that's okay. So what you might want to do is click on that, um, click on that particular case and take a look at it and read it and see what else it says. Because if you look at the overview, it says defendants were liable for copyright infringement because they released a new album containing plaintiff's copyrighted songs without new mechanical licenses prior to mechanical licenses, prior mechanical licenses were not transferable. Now mechanical license means that you have a right to utilize that work. Now as you see down here, I just went down to the timeline and the timeline says 1939 to 2017. Well maybe you pulled up a bunch of cases, maybe you pulled up a thousand cases and you want to narrow that. So you can take your timeline and what's really cool is you can change the timeline and move it so now we can see it comes up with 19 cases instead of 22 cases. So that's how you go about doing research on a case basis. Also remember that cases are a great way to utilize in fact situations so that you understand how the court actually would apply statutory law or regulatory law to a given fact situation that may be similar to your situation. So that's basically how we go about researching under Lexa, in, within Lexis. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to contact your instructor, or you can always contact the help desk at um, St. Pete College and see if they have a librarian that might be of assistance with that as well. I hope you all um, have a great week and do well on your research. Good luck.